Hello everyone, this is Scott coming to you from my garage. Today we're going to talk about corrosion protection. Today I wanted to talk about corrosion protection. Uh, as I've uh, been planning on building uh, a kit aircraft for many years, I've, I've spent a lot of time reading blogs and and watching people build online and uh, corrosion protection comes up always um, to prime not to prime to alodyne not to alodyne uh, to spray with a corrosion inhibitor or not um, all those discussions come up a lot it's a great thing to think about when you're not building and you're prepping um, here i am i now have a sling tsi kit uh, most of it in my garage and i'm building so now i'm i'm down i had to make some decisions so i wanted to talk about uh, what went into that a little bit so, uh, obviously, uh, I'm building a Sling TSI, and it's made of uh, uh, 6061 T9 aluminum. Uh, that particular type of aluminum is, is very corrosion resistant naturally. Um, it's a purer form of aluminum, from what I understand, than some of the others. And, um, and it, it offers good uh, corrosion protection naturally. Uh, it oxidizes uh, quickly and, and produces a layer on the skin that, that uh, prevents corrosion. Um, in, the, in the kit building world, other kit manufacturers use different types of aluminum. Um, some kits use different types in the same aircraft. Um, so if you're doing research, make sure you understand what type of aluminum is being used. Also, if you're doing comparisons to that 50-year-old Cessna that you've seen that's spotless after 50 years on the ramp, it was probably made with yet another kind of aluminum. So different, uh, different aluminums are, are going to react differently and require different levels of protection. Also, depending on where you live, where you're going to fly, uh, if it's going to be hangered or not, how much time outdoors, all that comes into play. So uh, uh, I'm in Florida. I love to fly the coastline and land at beachside airports. Uh, so uh, the reason I spend a little more time thinking about this is because I'm, I'm worried about corrosion because I'm in a prime area for uh, corrosion. Uh, I've, I've boated my whole life and dealt with corrosion on every boat I've owned. So I figured the same is something I need to give some thought to it for my aircraft. The, um, you know, just giving an overview uh, there, there's different things you can do to prevent corrosion. The first is just not to do anything. Uh, keep an eye on your plane after you built it. Uh, do good inspections, look for corrosion, keep it clean, keep it dry, keep it hangered. Um, and then if you see something that's concerning, clean it up, treat it, spray it with a corrosion inhibitor spray and move on. Um, the next thing you can do is uh, after you've built your aircraft is is do a, uh, a whole plane corrosion treatment. And that would be to spray it with uh, ACF-50 or Corrosion X or Shield or any of the products that are commercially available for that. Uh, th those products are widely available. Uh, you can spray them after the fact and coat everything down and they provide a good level of corrosion protection for a pretty long time from what I understand. I've never used any of them just from reading so uh, the pro to that is you don't add a lot of weight um, and it's not permanent weight. Um, you can uh, do it after the build. It doesn't slow down your building process and, uh, you know, it provides a high level of corrosion protection. Although it is temporary, you will have to reapply it from time to time. I, I do understand it's kind of messy, it kind of leaches out of all the pores of your plane after you apply it for weeks. Um, and, and I think there's a smell with some of those materials that um, you'll, you'll smell uh, in your plane for a while. So those are downsides. I don't know how major they are, but they're, that's some of the side effect of that treatment. Uh, the, the next sort of corrosion prevention that people do is, is alodining or bonderiting. It's the same process. It's just the, the, the company that produces the chemicals changed the name from Alodyne, which is, I think it was in, that name was used for 40, 50 years or longer. And they've just recently changed it to Bondurite. Uh, so that's a, a chemical conversion uh, where it, they're actually altering the outside properties of the metal and converting it to produce a layer that's uh, chemically resistant to corrosion. I believe it's just sort of a thicker oxide layer 
uh, on the skin of the aluminum. Again, I'm not a chemist. Uh, feel free to read up. There's a lot on the subject. Um, the way you apply this is you have a series of tanks. You have an acid that's uh, called Alumaprep. Uh, if you stick with that brand, um, there's other brands. Uh, but you use an Alumaprep. Um, you dip it. It's an acid. It strips away corrosion, ink that might be on the metal, uh, any dirt, that sort of stuff. Um, you, it's a short dip, maybe like two to five minutes. Uh, I've been doing three. The, uh, the next step is to rinse. Then you put it into the actual Bondurite Aladine solution. Uh, the one I'm using is Bondurite uh, 1201, I believe. I'll, I'll throw a picture on the screen later. The, uh, it, it's, a, uh, it's sort of a dark brown liquid when it's in the tank. You dilute it up. Um, I think it's two to one. And then uh, when, when your metal comes out, it's sort of a, a wheat color, a light golden color. So, uh, and then you rinse it off and then you let them dry and then that's that process. So it's not super complicated. Um, you, you can't have any tags or stickers or anything um, showing part numbers directly on the part because it's gonna get burned off in the acid. So you have to either know what parts you're dipping or have a wire attached to them with a part number uh, somehow attached to a wire, that sort of thing. Um, but it does add some steps, it adds some time, it adds some cleanup, some hazmat cleanup. Um, and, and the tanks themselves, depending on how big you go, will take up some room in your shop. So the last thing that you can really do for corrosion prevention is to prime. Uh, priming can come in many forms. It can come from a, a rattle can of self-etching primer or a um, zinc chromate, I think zinc phosphate, I can't remember the chemical, but uh, there's a, I have some notes here, but the, uh, th there's a number of rattle cans. Uh, th then there's also some uh, higher level products. There's, uh, the Stewart Systems has an Eco Prime, which is very popular. It's a water-based, it's, uh, it's not toxic like some of the others are. Uh, cleanup is a lot easier because it's a water-based product. Uh, it's not as chemically resistant as some of the other epoxy primers, uh, but the application cleanup and toxicity is much, much lower. Uh, the product that I'm using is probably the worst as far as uh, cleanup and uh, uh, toxicity, uh, but it's also reportedly one of the best as far as long-term protection. So it's, it's, it's an AXO product. And uh, I'll put a picture of it up online as well. The, uh, the, the it's a Axo Noble is the company that makes it. It's a it's a green military looking primer, uh, two part epoxy. I think they call it a chromated epoxy. Um, so it's got some some corrosion inhibitors in, in addition to the fact that it's a two part epoxy primer. Uh, it takes some extra time because it, it you have to mix it up and let it cook off for thirty minutes before you spray it. And then the cleanup, um, you need to use MEK to clean up your guns, um, which again is another, um, you know, a material that you need to be careful with because it's got some toxicity to it. So again, do your research and read up on all this. So uh, again, depending on which primer you show, you, you use, uh, it's going to affect how long it takes you to spray it. Uh, a rattle can uh, sort of primer might be a little quicker, but may end up costing a little more in the long run just because you have to buy a lot of spray cans. Um, and then, of course, the other stuff has a little more cleanup. You have to have a, uh, a larger air compressor to uh, uh, actually use a spray gun. Um, the, the last sort of option for corrosion protection, in the, the I'm sure there's others, but these are the main ones, uh, would be to do alodyne, bondurite process, and then prime on top of it. Uh, the alodyne bondurite process is a, is a good treatment to uh, prep for priming, and it, it promotes adhesion of the primer. So uh, I, I think Cessna and Piper and some of those, you can order that as an option where they do that process for their new aircraft, and it's very corrosion resistant. I think that's the Cadillac process, and it's going to take you a lot of time because it's two very different systems. Uh, you're going to have to do the full multi-tank dipping process for the alodyne bondurite conversion, 
and then you're going to have to do the full painting process of the primer. Uh, I think that that aircraft will last 100 years if you do that. Um, your great grandkids can fly that plane and it'll still be looking like it did when you did it. Um, which, which if that's your intention, I think that that's a good process, but it is going to add time for your, to your build, um, complexity and cost. The, um, so again, just kind of going through the, the options, um, they all, they all add time to your build. And so you got to weigh that out. How much time am I willing to spend on these processes? Um, I can just build it plain and just treat it after the fact. I can even pay someone to treat it uh, and not worry too much about it. Uh, or you can do some level of something in the middle. Um, you know, doing, doing uh, the, the, the ribs and places where the, the skins are going to touch the ribs, you can just spray those. Um, that would be sort of a, 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 you know, a middle ground of priming only the affected areas where you might have some, uh, you know, contact corrosion. So uh, there's different variables with that. And you can certainly do research to your heart's content on that online. But uh, what I've decided to do is uh, I, I found some tanks that are reasonable. They're Rubbermaid containers that I got at Walmart. Uh, I think they're about 35 inches long, about a foot, a little more than a foot wide. And uh, when I use a gallon of the acid and of the Aluma Prep, and then a gallon of the Aladine Bonderite 1201, um, it, it creates a, a pool at the bottom of the tank big enough for me to submerge all the small parts, like the ribs and the um, and all the little brackets and everything. So I'm able to do the Aladine Bonderite on all the smaller parts, the long parts, like the spars, the, the longer channels. I'm going to prime. So, and I'm going to prime with the AXO uh, chromated two-part epoxy primer. And uh, I'll show a picture of that on the screen as well. So um, in my mind, in my research, that's one of the top of the line uh, primers for being industrial strength, chemical resistant, and it's probably more than I need. Um, but I was interested in learning a new skill. I've never spray painted anything. Um, I bought a top of the line Harbor Freight gun, so I'm going to town with it. Um, it sprays pretty easy, um, it, it, and again, it's an internal part, so it's it's not going to be seen. Uh, I'm going to have the exterior of my plane um, primed professionally and painted professionally, um, and and I should have said that in the beginning. What I'm talking about is all internal parts. So uh, anyway, I'm going to do a, another couple of videos uh, showing the alodining um, just to kind of explain the process a little bit. That's not a complicated process. And then I'll do another video of the, uh, of the priming. So um, again, I, I, I think it's helpful. Um, it's, it's a little more, the priming is a little more than I thought it would be um, envisioning it in my head versus actually doing it. And it does take some time. The prep, uh, I'm I'm doing all the rules of the good PPE. Um, I've got a forced air ventilation system instead of a mask uh, with filters. Um, I got it on eBay and uh, supposedly that's the best. So I, I decided to go that route instead of a mask with filters. Um, I'll show you that system and uh, as part of uh, going over the priming, but uh, it's all part of the, it's all part of the equation, deciding what you want to do, how involved you want to get, how much time and money you want to spend um, but I'll kind of show you what I've done and um, maybe it'll help people who haven't gotten started yet make those decisions. Well, thanks for listening and uh, have a good day.